you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Boss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. A monster roller coaster with your brain. Wow, that sounds like something to do. Hi, folks. I'm Chris Voss, the Chris Voss Show.com. Welcome to the big show. We certainly appreciate you guys having you, uh, having me and us and everyone on the show and everyone else out there. And now, a man who thinks he's funny, but he's just an idiot. I'm your host, Chris Voss. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Uh, it's almost, that's just dumb anyway guys thanks for coming on we certainly appreciate you guys as always uh refer the show to your family friends and relatives we have an amazing author on the show we're talking about his business uh, he has a podcast too as i do everyone's into podcasting these days but only about one percent of people are good at it and he's good at it uh i'm not but so we're gonna find out how to make a podcast work uh also uh go to goodreads.com for chess chris foss go to youtube.com for chess chris foss go to all the places on the interwebs you know a, a real part of being on the chris foss show is part of the family the family that loves you doesn't judge you and we know that's better than what your mom gives you every day when she tells you to clean your room so or your wife does uh so there you go pick up your socks damn it uh anyway she she paid for that message by the way that's an ad on the show um so <laughs> do that but refer the show to your family friends and relatives put your arm around in this holiday season and say i'm going to give you the gift that keeps on giving and by the way i don't pay, have to pay anything for it sign up for the chris foss show and subscribe it's the best thing for you it'll make you smarter prettier more lovely and more educated and everyone knows when you do that you're more sexy so you might get some more uh, you know sexy sexy love time there from i don't know uh whoever you're dating whatever it's your business not mine uh but they are still dming me uh anyway guys uh on snapchat so anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. We're just kind of throwing in every comedy I can come up with here at the second. Uh, he is the author of the newest, hottest book that's coming out December 11th, 2022. You can pre-order it right now. House of the Customer, a blueprint for one-to-one, -one, customer-first, employee-driven business transformation. Greg Kilstrom is on the show with us today. He's going to be talking to his amazing new book and everything that goes into it. He is a best-selling multi-book author speaker and entrepreneur currently an advisor and consultant to top companies on marketing technology customer experience and digital transformation initiates as a principal and chief strategist at gk5a we'll find out what that means on the show he's also the host of the agile brand with greg kilstrom podcast he is a two-time ceo and co-founder growing both companies organically through acquisitions and ultimately leading to both being acquired one in 2017 and the other in 2021 he has worked with some of the world's top brands including adidas choice hotels coca-cola dell fedex hp marriott mtv starbucks toyota and vmware and now he's finally hit the pinnacle of top companies the chris Voss show podcast welcome to the show greg how are you yeah great great thanks so much for having me <laughs> thanks for coming it. as well uh quite the ramble we put up today so there's that and uh wow the snapchats are coming in uh so welcome to the show greg give us your dot com so people can find you on the interwebs yeah, sure. So you can uh, you can go to my website. It's gregkilstrom.com. And I'm really active on LinkedIn as well. So easy to find me there, too. There you go. Uh, so uh, let's still lead off with your book. We're going to talk about a few things today. Your book, some of the consulting you do and the work you do. And then uh, also uh, let's we'll get a plug in for the podcast because I need to find out how to podcast. I'm still <laughs> working on mine after 13 years. We're always working to get better. And it's not. Absolutely. so there's that. Uh, so House of the Customer, what uh, you've written a lot of books. How many books do you have, by the way, in your library? Yeah. So this is uh, this is number 11. There um, you go. So I've written a few. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I just um, I've been doing a lot of work over the last year with, you know, some of the brands that you just mentioned, uh, as well as some others on. You know, I think there's a lot of talk about we need to improve customer experience and we need to personalize things and, and make things better. And, you know, I think we're all kind of agreed on that premise that that's a good thing when it's done well. And when we treat customers, you know, data with privacy and all those kinds of things, I think what's been lacking 
to me and what I always try to do with my books and, and writing is make it practical. And, you know, I've been, I'm not only, I do speaking and I, I do coaching and all that stuff, but I actually, actually am hands-on and do the work as well. And so, you know, I just try to take insights from what I've done, what I've seen and what I, what works at, at organizations as well as proposing what I think should work. Um, and I took that, did, did some additional research, talked to a lot of people. Some of those were also guests on my show and, just put it all together. And, you know, it's, it really is a, a blueprint on how to do this well, how to really provide great personalized customer experience as well. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. You know, I, I, it, customer service really seems to be lost in today's world. Doesn't it? Does it seem like we've, you know, I, I don't know about you. Uh, you seem fairly young. Uh, I don't want to throw my age on, onto you. Um, but you know, I grew up in the era of search in search of excellence by Tom Peters. And it was that big customer service revolution time where everybody's like, we're going to do customer service now. You know, yeah. they were talking about the Nordstrom tire, you know, stories and things like yeah. that. And so, um, and so I, I grew up in that whole era of all of that. And um, it seems like it's so lost now. Like so many companies, you know, like I'll send an email to somebody and they're like, we'll get back to you in three days when we care. Um, you know, that sort of thing. And then people are going like, why are we making more money? So uh, there's all that. So what do you think? Have we, have we lost a lot of that? What's going on? Well, I mean, there's a lot of talk about it and a lot of talk about improving. Not only, you know, so there's there's a lot of there, the full customer journey, let's say, you know, it, it starts before when somebody just hears about a brand and, you know, what their experience is there, what what it's like to actually buy the product. And then, you know, customer service is generally what happens when something goes wrong or there's additional questions. And I think what's what's been happening, you know, from an intellectual level, companies are starting to understand, okay, we need to tie all of those things together. Now, from a practical standpoint, what you're experiencing is not, you know, is not unique. A lot of people are experiencing this disconnect between, oh, wow, you know, it's like, the, it was really great when I was about to buy the product. They were, they were right there timely with messages and all over the place, you know, ads were following me all around the web and whatever I buy the product and where's, where's the service or, you know, what, what's the experience then? And so, you know, good brands, the ones that, that are talked about, well, you know, they, they've been tying these, these dots together for a while, but there's a lot to do. And, you know, in a, in a fortune 100 company, there's a lot of silos, there's a lot of teams and departments and, one hand is not talking to the other. And, you know, these are the kinds of companies I work with quite often. And it's not even for lack of good intention. It's, man, one person, it, they might as well be on another planet, you know, one <laughs> department versus the other. And so trying to get them to say, well, why don't you talk with the person in X department? They're like, I don't know. I've never met them. I, I don't even know who they are, you know? And so you can imagine then us as customers, we're, we're trying to buy and use these products. And, we feel a disconnect. It's not our job to know an org chart, but you know, it's, we feel the disconnect. Yeah. It, it and, and you know, I mean, you, you look at like, you know, big cable companies like Comcast, um, you know, it's, it, and it, it's so, I, I saw some TikTok videos that were really funny about it, but uh, basically you'll, you'll call them and they'll be like, hi, we have you on hold and uh, you have a two hour wait time but we care about your business. You're very important to us. Now listen to this 30 second loop of a music uh, cut that will drive you insane in the next half an hour because you'll I've be listening to song. it over and over again. <laughs> yeah, like GoDaddy's the worst. I love GoDaddy, but they're the worst at it. It's like, I've called them and sometimes I'll just tell their agent, hey man, can you guys play the song, change the song, man? It's been the same song for like 10 years and it's like the same one minute repeat. Um, and, uh, they even, they finally did a thing where you can press pound to stop the song, but yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I see so many, you know, with the marketing we do, I see so many, uh, Facebook pages that don't get responded to, like no one's banning them anymore. Uh, it, I, we, we were joking the show about how people reach out to the Chris Voss show for customer service on some of the, the products that we review. Part of that is because they, no one will answer them at, at the companies. You know, yeah. and so they're re they're actually you know people go to YouTube sometimes to figure stuff out, and they're they're using customer service. Like I used to tell our clients like you know, ten years ago, I'm like, you really need to monitor like some of the products that we reviewed. You need to monitor some of the comments that you're getting, not only for feedback, but 
you know, there's a lot of people that can't seem to find customer service. I've had PR agents that get calls from customers because they can't get the customer service agency to uh, the company to respond to them. And so they're calling the third party agency because they found the press thing on the website. This is how bad it's gotten. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, and I, and I think that you know, that speaks to a few things. I mean, one, you know, I think there's been with the whatever they call it today, but, you know, great resignation and, and all those kinds mm -hmm. of things. There's been mm -hmm. a lot of, the, you know, a lot of staff shortages that, you know, everything from, you know, trying to get a meal in a restaurant to, you know, the things that you're talking about, just shortage of, of staffing. I think yeah. the other thing is um, the future of the customer experience means that brands have to be active on every channel that their customers want to be on. And that's a lot of channels. I mean, I think on yeah. average, I, one of the stats in my book is um, on average, someone uses between five and six channels during the sales process oh, wow. out of about 13 or 14 that are that are commonly used. And so, you know, think about that, even a, even a very large brand, you know, multi-billion dollar company, they've got to be great on about 13 channels because in the hopes that someone is going to reach out and and need something and so inevitably you, someone is going to reach out on a channel that is you know maybe if they just would have gone on twitter they would have gotten an instant response or something but maybe not anymore but you know if you know they would have reached out on the right channel um you know that would have happened but um, they ha they use the channel that they wanted to use because that's you know that's what we expect as customers. We expect wherever we are, whatever we ho we're holding in our hands, we're going to get a response from the brands that we um, that we you know that we support. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this: is is uh, you know I've always told everybody, hey, you need to you need to take and uh, be where your company your clients are. You can't just be on one platform. But you mentioned that five to six different they're, they're looking at five to different six different platforms at, at a company are they, is that research they're doing is there are they using that to validate them as a good company because you know you're like hey i don't know about yeah. this company let's validate them maybe see their reviews and stuff is that what they're doing they're validating or what are they up to yeah i mean some of that or some of it it could be you know somebody's walking in a brick and mortar retail store comparing prices online to the products they're looking at and then they leave the store go home and buy it on Amazon on their laptop. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that's three channels <laughs> in, in a very short, like that's a very short anecdote, you know? So in other words, if they're doing research, if they're looking on social media for reviews or other things like that, you know, all of a sudden those channels add up pretty quickly. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's so, so yeah, you know, they need to, that brand needs to make sure that there's positive reviews on all of those places that they saw that they have good in-store placement. Um, you know, all of those kinds of things. So it's, you know, it's offline, it's online, it's, it's all of the above. And yeah, you know, it's, it, it's challenging for big brands, but it's really daunting for small brands. Yeah. It's, it's cause they can't hire enough people, uh, especially nowadays. I mean, that's kind of one of the, I've, I've kind of had to, yeah, I was pissed off about customer service before I, I considered writing a book about it. I don't know. It's still, I'm, thinking about, I'm leaving it to you, people like you to write the book. Um, but I have some access to grind. Let's put it that way. Uh, and uh, I thought it was bad before. And I'm wondering if it's going to get worse because it seems like any time nowadays companies can hit a new low. You know, like one of the problems with COVID was uh, I saw this with like Facebook and Twitter where we had uh, different accounts get to have issues and stuff. And we're like, we're like, hey, man, we need this looked at. And they're like, oh, sorry. You know, you get the auto back. Oh, sorry. Right now, everyone's kind of at home playing uh, Minecraft and uh, we, we can't get to things because of COVID. And now there's and this, the responses are still there. And you're like, you know, COVID, I mean, it's not over, but it's largely over. We're not in lockdown anymore. So yeah. uh, and yeah. some people have returned to work and we were supposed to figure this remote work out by now. So uh, what the hell? And so. <laughs> Now it's gotten worse. You know, if I go in a restaurant or other places, I kind of have to bite my tongue a little bit, cal calm the jets a little bit. Don't go full Karen because you, you realize that people are struggling, especially these middle size and very small companies, you know, your restaurants and stuff like that. They're struggling. They have, they have, they have plastered notes on the door. You know, please, please. You know, I, I went into like, uh, what was it? Uh, uh five guys burgers the other day they have like a whole table out there like please work for us here's the applications well you know 
Like half the, like when they're taking your order, they're like, uh, so what would you like, sir? I'll take I'll take a burger and fries. And they're like, Would you also like a job? Because we need we need somebody to cook the burger and fries for you right now. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good joke. So um, you know, this is interesting. Um, and then I, what was the other number you gave me? They need to be on 13 different channels. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's kind of that's the that's the universe of channels that are typically, mm -hmm. you know, out out there. I mean, there's plenty more, I'm sure, you know, but you know it's it's up to about 12 or 13 that are most typically used mm -hmm. you know it's and and part of its validation i think is yeah. it? um if you, if you see that a company is you know spread out doing their job you can find them on linkedin you can find out what people are saying i mean i i'm i'm huge on i'm a huge reviewer reader especially on amazon man i learned the hard yeah. way man and i learned the hard way too you can't just look at the review graphs like i almost bought a 400 dollar um uh reverse osmosis water thing yesterday yeah. and i was ready to push the button because i was looking at that graph and i'm like 13 percent of those are really ugly one stars you should go read them and i'm like no i'm lazy i'm sure it'll be fine push the button chris and i'm like no chris you, you know this game you've yeah, lost yeah. before and I went and read the one stars. Holy mother of God. And then I went and read the four stars and the same thing was happening. It just wasn't happening to the level people were really upset about it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, or, or they just bought the product and the one stars were the people who had the product for four to six months. The, the four stars are the people who I bought it. They didn't own it long enough. Issues to... And yeah. their company's replacing it. And uh, the second unit's not working either. And I'm like, oh, man, this is, I see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. So uh, what are some other tidbits in the book that we can tease out that you talk about? Yeah, I mean, it's, I try, I've tried to make a practical framework to, to set up, you know, creating, um, build, building an organization around, you know, designing and delivering these experiences. So I use the metaphor of a house. So, um, you know, the, the roof is the processes and the systems mm -hmm. that kind of govern everything. And, you know, I kind of go through there's, there's pillars and the foundation of, of all of this is really the culture of the company that, um, that is, um, really centered around customers and everybody in the company can see how their, their job and their role supports customers and, you know, customer expectations and, and the customer experience. And I think from my work, I've, I've done a bit of work in the, in the HR and employee experience field as well. And, you know, the, a huge part of keeping employees engaged is just having, making sure that they have, they feel purpose in their job. And so my, one, one of the things that I say is, when customer experience and providing a great customer experience is part of the purpose of someone's job, it's motivation and reward for mm -hmm. that individual. And so, you know, it's kind of a, it, it's a nice, it has a nice flywheel effect in that, um, you know, it's, we need to motivate employees, Mo employees want purpose and motivation. Let's make the motivation doing great things for our customers. And then everybody wins because those customers buy more, the employees keep their jobs everybody even shareholders are happy with with that scenario yeah you know it's interesting to me because i've complained about the customer service and the non-responsiveness uh one of the biggest things i hate is zendesk i hate zendesk like a passion when i see you pop back with that you lose like so much standing with me as a company um and it's usually a response to like uh we uh we have uh, is it Zendesk and yeah, uh, I think it is. Uh, you know, companies like that, and you get an on response back, and it says, "Hi, thanks for your email. We really care about you as a customer and your customer service." Um, we usually get back to you within three days. Three days. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if you can't, if you need something more immediately, we have this forum over here that will not search any of the questions or problems that you have, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You can go spend hours going through this when really you could just be on the phone with one of our customer service agents for five freaking minutes to resolve your problem. But we'd rather have you go spend hours doing that. Like, I hate that. Like, I would never hire that thing. And I'm sorry. I mean, I might lose Zencaster as an advertiser, but I don't care. I, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just awful. Hire, yeah. do it internally have people that work for your company. And I love the idea that you have of making it, I don't know if you use the word game, but making it fun to, to uh, help customers. You know, the, and the funny thing is about all the stuff that I've complained about so far in the show, which is getting to be a pile and we've talked about, is 
I know these customers, these CEOs and these boards are sitting around at their office going, you know, we need to have more sales. Like, why are we selling more? We're not making enough money and we need to figure out how to sell. Hey, well, right. maybe, maybe you should answer the Facebook page. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I think that's, that's where this whole, this whole idea of, of a cultural shift in companies really is, you know, we're, um, we're so driven or companies are so driven by short-term sales and let's just get new customers in the door and we'll work it out in the, in the end. And sure enough, you know, their customers are getting messages like, like the one you just said, where we'll get back to you in 72 hours or, or whatever. What, one of the other things that I talk about in the book is you know, I lay out kind of a, a series of goals for, um, for companies that are not necessarily immediately achievable, but you know, it's kind of, I, called North Star goals. Like we're, that's where we're headed. We're not going to get there tomorrow. We know we're not going to get there tomorrow, but we've got to have something guiding what we do. And, and so one of those is really moving to this idea of just embracing this idea of customer lifetime value. So mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, anybody in sales, we all know, you know, loss leaders and, and things like that. You know, sometimes you got to get people in the door to, you know, and you lose a little bit of money on them. This is sure that that's a part of this, but this is really thinking about and embracing this idea that yes, a, a, a loyal customer for life, they're going to buy more, they're going to buy more often, they're going to recommend their friends. I mean, you know, I'm the brands that I'm loyal to, I am very loyal to, you know, a handful of brands, because sometimes I just like points, I guess, but also, you know, they treat me well, you know, I, I've, I've been been buying from them long enough. And, you know, I feel that and, you know, that's, they're getting customer lifetime value out of people like me versus, Maybe the first 30 days, I wasn't making them a ton of money, but five, 10 years in, you know, that's a, you know, that, that's a money maker. It's a lot easier to keep me than it is to win a brand new customer. Yeah. And, and, you know, that old paradigm of how much it costs to retain a customer versus getting a new one. Right. I don't remember what the numbers are. I remember hearing about it's it. It's a big ago. difference. Yeah. 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 It's it's huge. And do you, let me ask you this, because this is a big question I always have. Is this a generational problem? Because we went from a generation that was very demanding, um, you know, with Gen X, my generation, you know, we grew up with, you know, in search of excellence and Tom Peters and the whole, the whole yeah. Nordstrom, if you return a tire story that you can, they'll take the return, um, right. you know, you know, and, and exemplary award-winning uh, sort of customer service stories and expectations and then it seems like maybe millennials don't care as much or or when they're working they don't care as much for customer service and then gen z seems like even more it's just doesn't really care much it's just it does what it wants and it's going to buy a lot electronically so i maybe there's not a lot of customer service there except when it breaks i don't know is it yeah, is there I mean, a generational thing to it where we're losing this over generations of workers and, and people that don't care as much for customer service so it's um i think there's a, a number of things that are that are compounding i mean i think i think um i mean i'm a gen x or two so like you know i the millennials uh, i so i can talk shit about um millennials and, and gen z i guess but um sorry i don't know if i can swear or not so sorry <laughs> but, but you can you can um, swear it's just you want to keep it down because of youtube they'll, got they'll, it, got it. Okay. they'll put it so. in the back of the catalog <laughs> no no worries um so um but you know i think millennials and, and gen z just have a different relationship to work and, you know, I don't, I, as a Gen Xer, you know, I, I was taught a hard work ethic and, and all that stuff. And so, you know, I, I take that stuff very seriously. I think it's just a different mindset and a different relationship between personal time, work time and, you know, work life balance, whatever, you know, whatever term you want to call it. Um, so I think there's that. I think the other, the other part of it is, you know, I grew up in a world where, you know, part of my life, there was no internet and, mm -hmm. you know, there were three channels on TV and, and whatever. And, you know, we're, we're running into a lot of people in the workplace that, um, you know, they grew up with the internet and, you know, even if, even if it was very early in their life when the, the internet became a thing, it's, you know, they, they have grown up with nothing but choice and immediate gratification on, on all of these things. And so I think there's just, there's different expectations on what I get when and how, and they don't want to talk on the phone. They want to do everything online and, and their, their job is not necessarily defining them like it might people in other generations. And so you get all of those things. And, and the worst of it, I think is a lot of unengaged people on the job that don't really care to your point. And, you know, I think there's, 
there can be good out of it as well. But I think we do tend to see a lot of a lot of the, the worst come out when when we're trying to get some customer service. Yeah. And I'm wondering if maybe they're just they, they just figure screw it. Uh, I'm just going to hop around like maybe I, I wonder yeah. what the numbers are between Gen X uh, hop, hopping around uh, and just not being brand loyal. I think millennials and Gen Z's are less brand loyal and they'll just they'll just say screw it. I'll just go to somebody who talks to me and I'm better brand loyal. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Well, yeah. And say, same with their jobs, too. I mean, you know, the gone are the days of pensions and, you know, and, you know, staying at a company more than five years. Right. So it's like that's when you when you look at that from the customer experience standpoint, you know, the employees, it's like they're going to be there like 12 months and, and hop to another job because they can. And they've been incentivized to do that. The only way to get a raise these days is to move move companies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like it, it's um. You know, I, I can I can feel for that. At the same time, I'm also a customer that's frustrated with with <laughs> lack of service. So you know, it's 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 a tough one. Yeah, and you you look at like companies like uh, Twitter's a good example right now because so many people left. Um, yeah. My my feed's like a mess. I get notifications that are a mess. Like I get notifications from stuff I don't even follow. Yeah. I'm like, why? And uh, <clears throat> it seems like it seems like every worst person's buying ads there now because they're really cheap. And so I'm seeing a lot of just nasty stuff. Like I think I got an OnlyFans notification on my email from from my list of people I follow. And I'm like, wow. why is that there? Yeah. And uh, and I'm like, did I follow that when I was like, I don't know, drunk in the middle of the night or right, something? Right. And I, and I, I two or three times now these have come across and I've clicked on them. They're not sponsored ads, so they're not coming through that way. But I don't follow them. And I'm like, yeah. why am I getting this when I don't? it's not there but yeah the whole thing's a mess and i've sent notices uh, for some account issues into twitter and like no one's even answering and so and yet yet they're like hey advertisers come trust us and stuff right, uh, right let's move on to your book we want people to pick that up of course on the on the web house of customer a blueprint for one-to-one -one customer first employee driven business transformation and check out his other books uh, that greg has done the uh, total 11 um let's talk about what you do as your customer service get a plug in for your podcast as well yeah sure so yeah the the podcast is called the agile brand with greg kilstrom i'm in uh, about to start year five so nice. I've been doing it for a few years yeah yeah a, a little over 300 episodes so Looking forward to uh, yeah, new new year of of gas, and I I, I talk with marketing leaders, so primarily larger like Fortune five hundred brands, as well as um, uh, marketing leaders from like marketing technology platforms and, and things like that, and just have a have a dialogue much much like you know the the stuff in my book have have conversations about that, and you know it just I I think it's it's so fun for just to do it myself, and I get to have. 150 conversations a year with really smart people people smarter than me about all this yeah. stuff and i learned so much and you know I, I hope the listeners learn as much as well there you go and also plug for your show i'll be on friday in a few more days yeah. i'll be on your show uh i won't be one of the cool smart people but uh <laughs> i'll come down your it. show probably quite a bit but i'll be funny and that's <laughs> how i make up for being stupid um <laughs> All my audience right now is going, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. We, well, this is the funny boy, but he's an idiot. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, let's talk about what you do at your company there. Uh, yeah. Agile Brand uh, with Greg Kilstrom. You do consulting, speaking, you have an academy. Let's talk a little bit about some of what you do for companies and companies that might be listening, how they can reach out to you and work with you. Yeah, yeah. So I do do a few things. So um, I do speaking and workshops and, and training under under the Agile brand. And so that's things related to marketing technology, customer experience, mm -hmm. digital transformation. So I work with companies, whether that's really giving a high level overview, overview to teams or actually do hands on exercises and and workshops to really, you know, get in the weeds and, and, and prioritize efforts and, and things like that. Um, I also do consulting through a company called GK5A, and that's um, that is me as an advisor or consultant to companies, you know, in the Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 space on you know the the same types of topics. And you know, a lot of times I'll be part of a team that that works to solve some of these problems. Sometimes I'll work as a, as an advisor to a CMO or you know SVP of marketing or, or something like that, just as they're trying to figure out the the steps ahead and. Uh, really guide a lot of teams into doing some, you know, some big transformation efforts. 
There you go. There you go. Uh, anything more we need to touch on with what you do in consulting? And I imagine, are the thrusts of most of your 11 books, are they uh, about customer service or give us kind of an overview on some of the things you talk yeah, about? Yeah. I mean, I write about what I learn in my work and I also write in order to learn more. So, you know, I do, I do, I do research um, to write the books, but I also write about my firsthand experience and, you know, some of the challenges that I, that I run into. And, you know, a lot, they're, they're really for, for anybody in, in the marketing or customer experience field, but a lot of the companies that I work with, they're, they're larger companies. So I talk about some of the challenges that, just exist within, you know, big brands that we all know and, and, and buy products from, but, you know, they have their own unique set of challenges. I've been an entrepreneur. I've started a couple of companies. I've been, you know, I've done startups. So I know what it's like to have a one to 50 person company as well. But a lot of the work that I'm, or the work that I do now as a consultant is really for the, for the larger ones. There you go. <clears throat> I think I'm going to start a speaking tour and it's going to be called fuck Zendesk. <laughs> i'm gonna do a ted talk on that i mean I, I i'm sure they're a nice company with wonderful people but um that and chatbots i think i'm i have a big I like i want to find everybody who uh sold companies to do chatbots i want to find a way to hit them over the head um <laughs> so uh just just in a literal sense not in a violence form uh unless i meet them personally no i'm just kidding those are jokes people we're just doing jokes in the show don't write me um but uh no the the chatbots are the worst because the chatbots many times just run you in circles uh in the end it's like hi the chatbot just ran you in circles for about a half an hour with idiot questions and in the end we're just going to respond to you by email so just respond to me by email <laughs> yeah i i know what you mean it's yeah it's it's really frustrating you know i i think there's a lot of potential in that in that space but i've i've I'm like you i've i've been you know, I've gotten the run around several times and it, yeah, just inevitably, how do I just send someone an email? You know, yeah, just, just, if you just would have let me know that it's like the call tree things when you call your bank or whatever, it's just like, <laughs> I just know I hit pound. Like I don't yeah. even, you know, and sometimes it works. Sometimes it's a different button, but I just, I don't even listen to anything. I just like get me to customer service because whatever, whatever your options are, they're never going to solve the question that I have. <laughs> yeah. I can check my, uh, my balance on my phone you know i don't need to call into a phone to check my balance like uh -huh. when i call in uh -huh. i really need a problem because i don't like talking to people on the phone that's the other thing i hate they when they go they go have you tried our app our app can get to you sooner and you're like yeah i've looked at your app it's a piece of garbage right. i can't find anything what i need there and that's why i'm calling you because your app doesn't work right. uh they're you know, like meanwhile go to our app you know, just like right. everything sends the message that like f you we don't have time for you we don't want you. And then even worse, you know, they'll tell you, I still care about you. It's kind of like my first seven marriages. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just basically like, I, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of love you. Just keep the money rolling. And uh, yeah, I don't want anything else to do with you. That's basically the first seven marriages. Of my I know what you mean. Seven or eight. I can't keep track anymore. Um, I think we're on the ninth. I don't know what that means. Anyway, that's a joke, people. I've been single. I'm never a nerd. Um, but uh, anything more we want to tease out or touch on? I see a lot of your books are based on customer service, how companies can develop better uh, processes on uh, stuff. And, uh, man, I need to catch up with you. It took me 54 years to write my first book. And, uh, and uh, at this pace, I'll be 102 when the second one comes out. <laughs> You know, not never too late to. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I I write so I can learn more and and uh, you know and and so you know, it's I feel like it's part of my job really to to do this stuff. So I I love mm -hmm. doing it. I, there's a lot of people that don't love doing it, and I think there's a lot of ways to to share knowledge. But there you but, go. Yeah. Evidently, I can't do math either. It would be 108. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. We're doing the show, man. There's a lot going on here. People. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't blame me. I went to public school. Everyone knows that. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, thank you for coming on the show, uh, Greg. We really appreciate it, man. It's been very insightful. And yeah, let's start a let's start a new customer service revolution. Damn it, I want one, man. I've got my yeah. pitchfork and I've got my torches ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to go, man. Like I'm I'm over it. And uh, companies need to get it. Like I see, you see all these companies going we're trying to figure out how to make more money, and you know the bottom line. Gary is the bottom line, and how to make these workers more productive. You know, I'm seeing a lot yeah. of laughs going on because people are like, well, we don't have enough revenue. You know, what was interesting was back in the day when IBM, I think, hit its first recession or its first downturn of revenue, one of the ways they kept from laying off employees, they turned everybody into a salesman yeah. and retained them 
And that's how they drove up sales and saved the company or pulled it out of the recession. I don't remember what the story was back in the day, but um, just by doing that, increasing the bottom line, like here, here's an idea. Maybe, maybe don't lay off all those employees. Maybe put them on customer service. <laughs> right. Right. Maybe take yeah. them off that Zendesk thing and move it from three days to like now. Yeah. You know, I know, I, mean, I know with, with that many more people, you, they probably could. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's the money right there. <laughs> um, you know, it, one of the things we found is, um, we deal with a lot of PR agents and, you know, we do a lot of shows and CS show and mm -hmm. South by Southwest, NAB show. And we do all these shows. And for decades we work with in a lot of our review products, uh, you know, we do reviews of tech products. Um, we work with PR agents. And one thing that seems to have happened near as I can tell over COVID is all the companies said, well, fuck it. We're not, we're cutting that overhead of PR agents. And so they've taken some guy who runs, uh, you know, who's doing the, uh, who, who's some employee who's doing, uh, I don't know, warehousing job running the forklift. And now he's over marketing a customer service and pretending to try to be a PR agent. He doesn't understand anything. Yeah, about what we're yeah. doing. And I'm like, why do we need to send you a product to review? And like, this just seems expensive. Right. And right. you're just like, do you understand this is a write off? Like, there's a TikTok joke here somewhere of me, but what's a write off? It's where you're recovering. Let's write people off. No, but it's like a write off. And you're not sending us the retail product for cost. You're sending us, you know, the three hundred dollar product you spent fifty dollars in China to make. Yeah, so you're out yeah, fifty bucks and you're writing it off. But you, do you understand the marketing concept? Like the marketing conversations I have with these people are just insane. And I'm like, you really need to go get your PR agent back because they know what's going on. And there's it's probably this is the reason you don't have sales is because forklift Jack is running marketing. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, marketing is always the first thing to get cut, you know, when there's when there's a downturn, and it's yeah. like, you know, so you, the you, last you place yourself. you should cut, the last right. place you should cut. Like yeah. anytime we had to do uh, cut downs, I was like, I, touch it, fire me first. <laughs> yeah, right, right. yeah, like uh, take my salary. You know, don't yeah. don't cut sales, man. Don't cut sales. Yeah. You slit your own throat. That's what you're doing. So yeah. this has been a really important discussion and hopefully a lot of people right now are ashamed about having their chat bots and their Zendesk. But, you know, customer service is, is still a human to human thing. Like I have people that will write me back and they'll be like, uh, is this a bot? Because this sounds like the CEO. I'm like, no, it's actually a customer. It's actually me because yeah. I give a shit. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I care. What? This doesn't happen. Yeah, it does. It does with my yeah. company. So, um, yeah, I give a damn. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, well, welcome to my world. Uh, I, I'm a Gen Xer. I come from Tom Peter right, right. in search of excellence. I want to make you happy. I want to keep you as a customer because getting a new customer, especially in a digital world, is even harder, I think, because there's so much competition, especially with, you know, the online ads you have and everything else. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Well, it's been wonderful to have you on the show, Greg. Give us your .com so people can find you on the interwebs, please. Yeah, sure. It's uh, gregkillstrom.com. Uh, you can find everything there. And my consulting is gk5a.com as well. There you go. Uh, check him out, guys, online. Follow him on all the different social media play platforms there. He's 13 platforms or wherever he's on social media. <laughs> uh, House of the Customer, a blueprint for one-to-one -one customer first employee-driven business transformation i love the idea and concept you can order the book now for pre-sale available uh i think december 11th 2022 we'll ship out to you uh you can get this as a nice christmas gift too it's right before the holiday so order it for a christmas gift uh get your customer service fix right it's 2023 we're gonna make a lot of money next year knock on wood <laughs> hopefully but it's looking that way uh we're finally out of this whole covid thing so we're supposed to be knocking on wood some more there. There's a lot of knocking for that one. Um, and people are like, why is there knocking going on the show? What's going on with the mic? Um, but uh, check that out as well, guys. As always, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Guilt trip them. You know, make them shame them or guilt trip them into subscribing the show. You're like, you know, you'd be a whole lot smarter and I could put up with you and I might be more interested in the bedroom with you if you would subscribe to the Chris Foss show and also pick up your socks and underwear, guys. Anyway, that's just a joke, people. But uh, your wife did send me that on Snapchat. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to go to YouTube.com for it says Chris Foss. Go to Goodreads.com for it says Chris Foss and LinkedIn.com Chris Foss. 
uh, whatever the hell it is. You know what's going on LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, tell your wife to quit sending me stuff on Snapchat. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for putting up with the Snapchat callback joke this episode. What the fuck? It's different every time. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you next time if we do another one. We've only been doing it for 13 years. But yeah, there's a whole lot more. And see me on Greg's show as well. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be funny, man. I'm going to make him laugh so hard. He's going to be like, why did I bring this idiot on? Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.